Saxophone music is written on a single staff consisting of five lines. This is identical to the upper staff used for piano playing with the treble clef or G clef circling the G line. The staff is divided into smaller sections called bars or measures, which are divided by bars or measure lines. At the beginning of the staff is the time signature, which establishes the beat. There are many different time signatures, some of which are regular, while others are irregular. 4-4 four, four is a commonly used time signature, which we will use in this tutorial. 4-4 four, four time means that there are four beats to the bar. It is counted. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. The speed at which we we'll play these beats is determined by the tempo, which will be indicated at the beginning of the music. One way to ensure that you are playing in time to the tempo is to use a metronome and set it to the correct tempo indicated, or you could play along to a drum beat or a backing track. Next to the time signature is the key signature, which indicates what key the music is in. The key signature may consist of one or more sharps, or one or more flats, or neither. The key signature lets us know which notes occurring often should be played as sharps or flats without having to continually write the sharps or flats in the music. For example, here we have a piece of music with a key signature of C, but there are lots of sharps written in the staff. If we change the key signature to E, this tells us that all Fs, Cs, Gs and Ds are to be played as sharps. This means that we can remove those sharps from the staff, which makes the music a lot easier to read. It will still sound the same since the key signature lets us know which notes are to be played as sharps. Scales are related to the key signatures, and that's why teachers would emphasize learning your major and minor scales. If you know your scales, then you know which notes will usually be played in a certain key. For example, the key of D has two sharps. This means that all Fs and Cs are to be played as F sharps and C sharps unless otherwise indicated. The scale of D has the same two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. So if you know how to play the scale of D, then you know what are the fundamental notes of a song that's in that key. Notes are written on the lines and in the spaces of the staff. The note symbol varies to indicate how long they should be played. Some notes will just have the head, others will also have a stem, and others will also have one or more tails. The tails always point to the right, and the stem on the third line can either go up or down, but usually point downwards above the third line and upwards below the third line. So let's start learning the lengths of the notes and how to play them in 4-4 time. The names of the notes are different depending on what country you live. The first note is called a whole note because it lasts the length of the entire bar. Here the note is on the second line, so the pitch of the note is G. We can easily remember this pitch because it's on the line of the treble or G clef. So press down the first three fingers of the left hand without the octave key and sound the G lasting for four beats. It will sound like this. When playing single notes or repeating notes, we often tongue the note, which means we put our tongue on the reed and start blowing to build up some pressure. Then we release the tongue in order to give a crisp start to the note. To end the note, we put our tongue back on the reed, which will stop the reed vibrating and so stop the sound. Tongue in the note will give a nice start and stop to the note. The other way of playing a note is to use a breath attack, in which case we will just start blowing to start the note and stop blowing to stop the note. But this way of playing is not usually used as it does not give a clean start or stop to the note. The next note is called a half note which lasts two beats, so in 4-4 time we can fit two half notes in the bar which last four beats. A half note is also called a minim. So here we will play G for the first two beats and A for the second two beats. A is written in a space above the G line. The A note has the first two fingers of the left hand pressed down without the octave key. It sounds like this if you tongue both notes. The next note is called a quarter note because it lasts a quarter of the bar in 4-4 time. It is also called a crotchet. Here we will play the notes G, A, B and back to A. B is played with only the top finger press of the left hand without the octave key. When playing several notes, they can be tongued individually, or you can play them legato, slurred or smoothly. That is, you tongue the first note so it has a good start to the note, and you put your tongue back on the reed when the last note ends. But all of the notes between are played without interruption on the same breath. This gives a nice smooth transition from one note to the next. It sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
Just be aware that some musicians will tongue every note, while others will play the majority of the notes legato or slurred, while others will use a combination of both, tonguing some while slurring others. It is often used to add an effect. This is indicated by using slur markings in the music. Here, where there is slur markings, we will tongue the first note to start the sound and play the rest of the notes on the same breath and put our tongue back on the reed at the end of the last note under the slur. The notes without slur markings will be tongued individually. If there are no slur markings on the sheet music, then we can use our own judgment on how to play the notes. The next note is called an eighth note, which lasts an eighth of the bar in 4-4 time. It is also called a quaver. Here we'll play the notes G, A, B, C, up and down. The way we count this is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. The C note uses the second finger of the left hand without the octave key and sounds like this. In sheet music, certain notes are grouped together using beams, so they are easier to read and count the music. There are other shorter notes, such as the sixtieth note, also called a semiquaver. This will be counted as one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Thirty-second notes and above, you will probably not use playing the saxophone as a beginner. Now let's have a go at playing the song Mary Had a Little Lamb. As you can see, the key signature has one sharp, so this is in the key of G. This means that all of the Fs written in the music should be played as F sharp unless otherwise indicated. This is how it sounds. sharp raises a note by a half tone and a flat lowers a note by a half tone. A double sharp raises a note that has already been raised by a half tone and a double flat lowers a note that has already been lowered by another half tone. A natural sign cancels a sharp or a flat. These markings are called accidentals. If an accidental is written in the music not counting the key signature, it only applies to all of the notes on the line or space where the accidental appears and only for that bar. After the bar line, notes return to the normal pitches as indicated by the key signature. At places where confusion could happen, a sharp or flat may be inserted to make it clear what notes should be played. When writing music using music software, accidentals are automatically inserted in places where they are technically not needed but they are there to remove any confusion. Notes with a small dot beside them increases the duration of the note by additional half of the normal duration. So for example, a quarter note lasts a beat, whereas a dotted quarter note lasts a beat and a half. That is one and a half times the normal note. Dotted notes are usually followed by smaller notes that together add up to a beat or subdivision of a beat. Now let's try another song using dotted notes. London Bridge is falling down. are three notes played in the duration of two of the same notes. So an eighth note triplet is played in the same duration as two eighth notes. That is, it is played in the same time it would take to play a quarter note. It is counted as one a day, two a day, three a day, four a day. The triplet will usually have a three above or below the notes and may have a curved or square bracket. There are various forms of triplets. There are other tuplets like the triplet where more notes are played in the time it would take to play a few of the same notes. These follow set rules. When playing music, it's not just notes that we play, but also rest notes where no note is played. 
For every note duration, there is an equivalent rest note duration. The duration of notes and rests must add up to the full value of the bar. There should be no duration not accounted for by either notes or rests. Now let's look at some other common markings that we'll see on a piece of sheet music. Time markings look like slow markings, but they are over two notes of the same pitch. It is to show that the two notes are to be played as one note for the total duration. This is particularly needed across bar lines, since it's not allowed to write a note that extends over the bar line. It has to be written as two notes with a tie mark. Staccato. A dot above or below the head of a note indicates that the note is to be played staccato, which means shorter than the normal duration. Tenuto. A line above or below the head of the note means that the note is to be played with the full duration. When playing jazz, some notes are played short while others are played long based on the jazz language or unwritten rules. So this marking can be used to ensure that certain notes are played for their full duration. In sheet music, there are various markings to show that a note is to be accented or played louder than others. There are other markings to show the dynamics of the music, such as how loud a group of notes should be played or whether the volume should gradually increase or decrease. Ghosted notes. An X above or below the head of the note shows that the note is to be played with the tongue resting on the reed, which gives a muted sound. Sometimes in jazz, a ghosted note will not be heard or faintly heard. A plus sign. This can be used to show that a false fingering or alternative fingering should be used. Using a false fingering will give the same pitch but a different timbre from the normal note so the note stands out. For example, playing an overtone will give the correct pitch but a different timbre. Bends and scoops. A curved line on the note shows that the note is to be played starting at the correct pitch, then bending down and up again. There are other similar curves to show that the pitch is either bent down or bent up. A full off is a rapid descent in pitch and volume at the end of a note. This can be done either by bending the note or playing a descending scale. A glissando is a rapid playing of notes between one note and another. Grace notes. A grace note is a small note, often with a line through it. It does not have duration of its own and is played quickly attached to a following note. It gives a short bending feel, but consists of two notes, the grace note and the following note. <laughs> Mordent. Mordent is a way of indicating that the note above or below the note played is also to be played quickly while returning to the original note. In the upper mordent, you'll play the note above, and in the lower mordent, you'll play the note below, but there are variants on these. Some may play the next note diatonically, that is the next note in the scale of the key, while others will play a half tone above or a half tone below. An accidental may be included to clarify that a half tone above or below is to be played. Leisure lines are lines used to show the notes above and below the five lines of the star. When the notes are very high that a ledger line makes it difficult to read, then the symbols 8VA or 15VA can be used. This indicates that the notes should be played an octave or two octave higher than is written. The notes that are affected by this notation will be indicated under a square bracket. Swing fill. At the beginning of the sheet music, there might be the word swing or a symbol of two eighth notes equal in a tie triplet. This means that although the sheet music will be written as normal, all eighth notes should be played as long on the on bit and short on the off bit. So a series of eighth notes, which would normally sound like this, will sound like this when played swung. <laughs> Also be aware that jazz has its own set of unwritten rules in which note lengths may not be played as written depending on where they occur in the beat. You will need to listen to a lot of jazz to get a feel for how the written music should sound, that is, whether notes should be held for their full value or played short and vice versa. Now let's go through quickly the fingerings for the various notes before going through a more difficult song. Really low notes can be difficult for the beginner to sound. Opening up your throat as if yawning can help or using a softer reed. Also try to blow warm air as if fogging up a mirror instead of cold air. The low B flat, B, C and C sharp notes 
are played without the octave key and by moving the left hand pinky finger. The rollers will help to slide the pinky finger over the keys. Next, D to C sharp are played as follows without the octave key. The same fingerings used for D to C sharp are played again, but this time with the octave key pressed. The high D to high F sharp are played with the palm keys or high F sharp key if your saxophone has one. Above this is the altissimo range, which is more difficult to play. Now let's learn a more difficult song, putting what we have learned into practice. Here are the first few lines of Nothing's Gonna Change My Love For You, played by Kobayashi on the alto saxophone. You can hear a play by searching on YouTube, and you can also play along to the various play along versions also found on YouTube. First we see that there are 106 eighth notes per minute, which means there are 53 beats per minute. The tempo can be written in terms of quarter notes, eighth notes, or whatever is convenient. The key has one sharp, so this is in the key of G, which means that all Fs are to be played as F sharps. The key later changes in the song to one having four flats. The time signature is 4-4. Four, four. The seven over the first bar with the symbol beneath it indicates that there will be seven bars of intro before the saxophone playing. Then we have a half rest, a quarter rest, and an eighth note rest, followed by two sixteenth notes. In the next few bars, we can see some ties. So here, the two notes are to be played as one and held for the combined duration. Some notes are held over the beat, so we are playing on the offbeat. This is called syncopation. If we have the audio recording, it is often better to just listen to the recording and try to copy the rhythm. If we do not have the audio, then counting the beats will help in working out how the music should be played. You can see that an upper modern is used several times, though in other transcriptions, a lower modern is written. We also have a grace note, dotted rest notes, and dotted notes. One, and two, and three, and four, and uh, one, and uh, two, and uh, three, and uh, four e and uh, one and two and uh, three and uh, four e and uh, one e and uh, two and three and four and uh. I think I'm not changing my love for you. Here is the first line of the song Lover Man by Sunny Stitt. First we can see that the key signature is B flat, which means that all B's and E's are to be played as B flats and E flats. We can work out what the notes are. If you do not know yet what are the notes in the spaces and lines of the staff, you can count them up and down from the G line. We can identify the symbols, we can work out the timing for playing the notes, and with all this information if we continue like this we'll be able to play the whole song. So the only thing left for you to do is to go away and practice.